I want to welcome everybody to this Defeating Adventism video. And actually, this video is going to be a series. And, and I have a very special guest with me. I have Stephen Pitcher, who is, I'm just going to call him, he's an expert in the Clear Word Bible. Many of you have asked me to do videos on the Clear Word Bible. And after thinking about it for several months, I thought, why do I need to stop and do the research? I got access to the expert. We live close enough to each other that we can actually sit down and meet and talk about it. So this is the first of, and Steve and I were talking uh, just before we recorded this of who knows, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 videos we're going to do. We're going to do it until we finish as we're going to expose this book for the non-Christian heretical views that it contains. We're going to start here in this first video with just a slight introduction to the clear word, but I want Steve to talk about a little bit about himself and, and tell us why in the world did you get interested in this? Oh, and by the way, Steve, you just finished a book on the clear word Bible. Didn't you? Right, right. It's going to be published a chapter a week for the next several weeks, and uh, it'll be available as a downloadable PDF. What got you interested in this? Well, I've always been interested in, in new editions of the Bible, uh, especially since the 1947 discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls and the ancient manuscripts that have been found since then. So I've always been interested in new translations, which supposedly go back to the earliest manuscripts and are therefore the most accurate. As you get further and further back, you get more and more accurate with the manuscripts. And when I heard that the clear word was coming, I was excited about getting a new clear word Bible, and I got it, got the first one off the press. And what year was that? 1994. And uh, I opened it up, and every time I buy a new Bible, I go to specific passages. In this case, I went to John 1.1, 1, 1, John 8.58, and John 10.30. And I looked at those passages, and what I found shocked me. All Trinitarian like, passages you just Trinitarian the practices, way, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I went to those passages, and what was there shocked me because they were set up in such a way that you could teach anti-Trinitarian positions from them. So I put the book on the shelf, and I didn't refer to it for years. I just ignored it. And it's been the last few years I've been interested in getting the truth out about the Clear Word Bible. And this is what Jim is doing, is giving me an opportunity to share that with you and, uh, and hopefully clear up some misconceptions about the Clear Word and give some insight into how it was developed and why it was developed the way it is. So... You know, one thing that I, I want to start off with is, is this. W I, would you agree with me when we talk to Seventh-day Adventists, they say, well, the clear word is just a paraphrase. Right. And I brought something with me today, something I've had tagged in one of my books for years. This is a general introduction to the Bible by Norm Geisler. And, and on this particular page that I'm going to read from, on page 495 and 494, he has a list of various versions of the Bible and what they mean. Here's what a paraphrase is. A paraphrase, and I'm reading now from the text. Paraphrases are free translations or restatements of sentences, passages, or works in an attempt to keep the original sense of the text. And it goes on and on and on. When I read this, probably over a year ago, because I looked up this definition for the, the you know, because I'm thinking of the clear word because I'm always told it's a paraphrase. You know what? It's not a paraphrase. And you're going to, and I think Steve and I are both going to agree, this does not keep the original sense of the text That's at correct. all. That's correct. So hey, I have a, I have a list of things that I'm, that I'm going to go down here that I want you maybe to, to talk to the, talk to the people about. Okay. All right. So, yeah. The clear word, and we're going to see the name Jack Blanco here as the author, right? Yes. Who is Jack Blanco? Jack Blanco was the dean of the School of Religion at Southern Adventist University in Tennessee. 
and uh, he started rewriting the Bible as a devotional exercise in uh, 1990, I, I want to say 92, 90 or 92, so that by 1994 he had the whole Bible done. It took him seven years to do the, three years to do the New Testament, four years to do the Old Testament, and it resulted in what was known as the Clear Word Bible an expanded paraphrase that doesn't just try to clarify the text. He actually adds content from Ellen White and other sources and his own imagination to create this paraphrase where he changes the meaning of central passages in Scripture and ends up with passages that mean the opposite of what they were originally intended to say. Jack Blanco was on a YouTube video called Between the Lines. Yeah, Between the Lines was a publication, a video publication of the Review and Herald Publishing Association, which is the flagship publisher of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Books published by the Review and Herald are considered theologically correct, they have, if you will, they have the imprimatur of the church by being published there and sold in the Adventist book centers, ABCs, across the country. Now, I want to ask you about someone else here, a name that can be associated to this. Samuel Thomas Jr. Jr. What's, what's he have to do with this? Samuel Thomas Jr. Jr. interviewed Jack Blanco on a program called Between the Lines. Between the Lines, uh, I've already explained what Between the Lines is. And uh, anyway, Samuel Thomas Jr. is pastor of the Columbus, Ohio Central Seventh-day Adventist Church. And he actually promotes the use of the clear word in his church. We'll get to that in just a minute. And uh, anyway, he interviewed Jack Blanco and got Jack Blanco to talk pretty frankly about how he came up with the Clear Word Bible. You're right. And, and, and I remember watching that video a while ago, and it really is a, a complete promotion of this Bible. Yes. Uh, now, there's going to be Seventh-day Adventists out there right now who are going to say, why are you guys doing this? This is not an official book of our church. Hmm. So you don't need to do this video. Is this an official book of the church? It is as official as any other book published by the Review and Herald. It's promoted in the Bible section of the uh, Adventist Bible Centers, often given prominence on an end cap display showing all the formats that it's available in. Uh, it's been available in pocket size, large print. There are versions of it called Easy English, Clear Word, and the Clear Word for Kids. And uh, many different changes have been made in those than have been made in the standard Clear Word. And we'll be looking at those in future videos. Review and Herald, again, is the flagship publication publisher of the church. So as far as official goes, they say that they're not official. It's not an official Bible of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, but they've continued to publish and promote it as a Bible in their Adventist book centers. So No, I, I and I agree too. And so, you know, when I get Adventist books and, and I want to cite them uh, authoritatively, if it's from Review and Herald, Pacific Press, right. then, then it's official publications. That's so right. I, I I agree. I mean, I run into a dentist and say, well, it's not an official book of the church. Well, just open up the title page. It's published on Review and Herald Press. It doesn't get any more official than that. That's right. You know, and that's that's my complete thoughts on it. Now, when Blanco did this, did he have a methodology for putting this yes. together? Yes. Yes. It's actually come out in the Between the Lines video. Can you summarize his methodology? And I'm going to quote here, yes, from the program. He says, If Jesus were here today, 
What would he tell you? Well, we know what he said, but how would he say it? Is if Jesus were here today riding with me in the car or meeting me on a walk or whatever, and he's talking to me, how would he say what he said? So I started with the Gospel of Mark and then started writing it down. And then, you know, you go on and you try to imagine how Jesus is talking to you, trying to make this clearer. Then after then, you cross out this line out or this word out. Or if you write in the margin, you know this was just a personal experience. And Samuel, the interviewer, I used to get so caught up, I was in a different world. I was walking by the side of Galilee. I was listening to Jesus. So it's very clear from this little explanation that Blanco used his imagination to create the Clear Word Bible. He did not go to, go to biblical manuscripts and original sources. He actually used his imagination as he rewrote the Bible in his devotional times each day. You know, and what, what you just described to me there, and, I, and, and I've read that before, it makes this book just a work of fiction out of one man's head. Yes. And to even call this a Bible is just blasphemous because this isn't going to lead anybody to the true Christ of the true Bible. That's right. Anyway, in that uh, YouTube video that you referenced between the lines, he's interviewed by a pastor. And I believe that pastor even comes out and endorses the clear word Bible in that. Yeah, he does. Uh, I quote again from the program between the lines. I, Samuel Thomas, have enjoyed it, the clear word. I have used it in teaching and preaching and ministry and even in Bible study. Not long ago, we were at a meeting together. I stopped you, Jack Blanco, and I said I've shared TC, the clear word, with my members and encouraged them to buy it because they need to know that this, although paraphrased, it's theologically consistent with our Seventh-day Adventist faith. And so from that standpoint, you can say, here's not only a devotional reading or study for me, but I can rest on it. Where you can't really say that about all the other devotionals. Blanco responds, No, there are some translations that are a little tweaked, if I can put it that way. As one translation, when it talks about not divine punishment, but divine punishing. Then Thomas continues, And those are the kind of distinguishing differences that actually make the clear word more valuable. And that's why I appreciate it, because I knew that you would put forth every effort to make sure that it was consistent. You just said he uses this from the pulpit. Yes. Again, this is the work of fiction out of one man's head. It it should not be used in a pulpit anywhere. Right. But Seventh-day Adventists use it. Obviously, they, yeah. They, I mean, I, I hear about them on often on my YouTube comments. There will be Seventh Day Adventists who will at least admit to using it. Yeah, they try to back, they try to distance themselves because they know the book has got problems. Oh yeah. Uh, but then again, when Adventists are, I, I I often say behind closed doors and no Sunday keepers are around, they'll speak honestly, and they'll tell us that they really use this, really just as you described. They'll use it not as a devotional, but they'll use it in in a place of a Bible. Yeah, in Sabbath school, they use it in Sabbath school. They use it in Bible study and for personal devotions. So let's talk about how the Adventists use the clear word and or and or support its use, like a Mr. Jim Miller in defense of the clear word. Okay, Jim Miller, who I believe is a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, was in was a writing for uh, Adventist Today in September, October 2000. And he wrote an article called In Defense of the Clear Word by Jim Miller and published it in Adventist Today. In the article, Jim Miller states, let me start off by saying that I am not a fan of the clear word, Jack J. Blanco's expanded paraphrase of the Bible. He then goes on to defend the clear word when used as a targum. He explains that targums are expansions of the Hebrew scriptures, documents in which rabbis have in inserted text into the passages to help explain their meanings. Miller's defense of the clear word rests on comparing the nature of the Targums with the clear word, an interesting but derived contrived distraction from the real problem. At the end of Miller's article, he unwittingly articulates the seductive danger of the clear word. He says, 
If I read Blanco's The Clear Word as an Adventist Targum, I can enjoy and respect this expansion on Scripture, and the popularity of The Clear Word compels me to learn to accept its use in church. So it's very popular, it's being used in church, and that compels him to have to accept its use. So here Miller admits that the paraphrase is being used in church, it is popular, and he is therefore compelled to accept its use. Yet the Seventh-day Adventist Church states officially that this work should not be used in church because it is not a true scripture. Many Adventists nevertheless do use the clear word in church, and in any other place they would use the Bible because they receive support for doing so from the semantic doublespeak of many Adventist leaders and publications. That's funny. We got Jim Miller telling us he'll use it from the pulpit, but you just read something from the Seventh-day Adventist Church who said you should never do that. Right. It, I, I, when I come across that stuff, I say we got a Seventh-day Adventist pastor in rebellion to his own church, but but that is is all too common. How about another one? We yeah. got a we got a, a former editor of the Signs and Times talking about usage yes. of the clear word. And who is that and yes. what did he say? Greg Brothers, former editor of Signs of the Times, wrote a story in Ministry Magazine publishing this article. Ministry Magazine is the main magazine for the ministers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And in there, Brothers illustrated his review with an apocryphal story of a boy in a Sabbath school class explaining the crossing of the Red Sea as a feat of modern military techniques, to which his Sabbath school teacher replied, Why, Johnny, that's not, in the Bi- that's not what the Bible says. No, said Johnny, but if I told you what it says, you'd never believe me. Brothers continued, Don't laugh. Johnny's dilemma is real. The Bible's not an easy book to understand, and sometimes it's even harder to believe. That's why Jack Blanco's The Clear Word fills a real need. It's a midrash, a running commentary that makes the Bible nice, safe, and simple. Brothers praises The Clear Word's orthodoxy and finally refers to it as a Bible. Not content to make the Bible a kindly, gentle book, Blanco's also seen to its orthodoxy. The Lord's Day of Revelation 1.10 is now Sabbath morning. Mark 7.19 no longer declares all foods clean. And in Revelation 21.22, Blanco has added that the temple or sanctuary I, John, had expected to see was located outside the city as a reminder of what God had done for his people. Obviously, Blanco has given much thought to the controversies racking our church, the nature of inspiration, the age of the earth, the authority of Ellen White et al., and his Bible provides simple answers for them all. It's it's just amazing to me the lengths that they go through to justify the use of this so-called Bible. Yes. I mean, I mean, we're going to talk in a minute, just even how the title changed, right? We talked right. about that earlier. It, it, it's not today known as the clear word Bible, because they removed the word Bible. Right. right. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to different different editions. It's clear that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is using this work in church. Right. And supports it. Uh, I got another name here for you. Alden Thompson. Okay, Alden Thompson is a 50-year instructor at Walla Walla University, a Seventh-day Adventist institution, where he was uh, teaching theology and biblical studies for the last 50 years. Alden Thompson wrote an article called The Clear Word, Adventist Adventist Bible, Adventist Message. He wrote this in the Pacific Union Conference Gleaner magazine. And he says, given the dramatic and far-reaching revisions found in this book, a more appropriate title would be the clear word commentary on the Bible. In spite of Blanco's candid statements in the preface that the clear word is not intended for in-depth study or for public reading in churches, many are making it their Bible companion for Sabbath school and church. Thompson explains his three reactions to the clear word, admiration, puzzlement, and alarm. Regarding puzzlement, he states, But the clear word goes far beyond paraphrasing. It also harmonizes, expands, and explains, and sometimes omits. 
One omission, for example, is a potentially troublesome phrase in Mark 7.19 that Jesus declared all foods clean. NIV. It disappears without a trace in the clear word. He expresses his alarm at how Adventist members are actually using the clear word. He says, But I must admit my disappointment moves to alarm when I hear Adventists exclaim, Finally, a Bible we can trust. What's wrong with the Bibles we already have? And have we become afraid to tackle the hard passages in Scripture? Let's not confuse the simple beauty of the gospel with the depth and complexity of Scripture. You know, you just read a passage there that ultimately proves that this so-called Bible, the clear word, has changed the biblical text. Right. Now, I, I just want to add, add something else to that here. I, I, I brought a couple extra books with me today because I want to show that Seventh-day Adventism um, has this propensity to use heretical Bibles. It's just not the clear word. There That's are right. other heretical Bibles. I, I already did a video on this one. This is the 18, I think it's 91. This is the emphatic diaglot. This one here came from the Jehovah's Witnesses. This one here is an anti-Trinitarian book, and I show in my, in my video where Adventists were quoting this anti-Trinitarian book even after they said they supposedly converted to Trinitarianism. Now, here, the next book, book here, which is, this is phenomenal. I'm gonna, I, I gotta do a video on this. I gotta move this up on my list of priorities here. This is the New Testament by Johannes Grieber. This is an ex-Catholic priest, 1930s, Germany, in contact with the spirit world. He gets this New Testament translation from the spirit world. And by the way, John 1.1 1, 1 happens to agree with the Jehovah's New World translation. But you know what I found when I did a search in all my, in all my Adventist magazines? Adventist quoted this book. Hmm. Uh, this is going to be the topic of a video coming up soon. Right. So... You just gave me a bunch of quotes from Adventists who are all enamored and making their justifications for use of the clear word. But not everybody's happy with it, are they? No. What about this Victorian conference kerfuffle the, they had? Yeah, the Victorian conference is a an Australian conference. This is a quote in the uh, sales of the clear word Bible printed by the Review and Herald Publishing Association, have been suspended in the Victorian Adventist Book Center at the request of the Victorian Conference Executive Committee. The decision was made following concerns expressed by the South Pacific Division's Biblical Research Committee, noting that the paraphrase was like a denominational interpretation. A new edition will be published under a different title, The Clear Word. The Executive Committee plans to give further consideration when the new edition is available. Isn't that some? It's funny. So, it's funny to me. Yeah, we had that. I hear about all this unity of the remnant church, and here I have a whole section of Seventh Day Adventism who said, well, "We're not selling this book." That's right. I, that's that's astounding. And and you're right. And then they mentioned, of course, what we just mentioned earlier that the title is going to change. Yes. And we know it did. Yes. And I think a lot of people watching this already know that too. But we'll talk about that. What was the, okay, we've talked about how Adventists have reacted to this, yeah. largely favorably, maybe except for this Victorian conference. How has the non-Adventist response been to this book? Well, generally, Christians are not aware of the Clear Word Bible. It's something that has flown under the radar, and you will rarely find a Christian who is aware of the Clear Word Bible. Like alone Adventism, but yeah. Yeah. However, one person, Dr. Wayne Grudem, research professor of Bible and theology at Phoenix Seminary and general editor of the ESV Study Bible, made a statement about the clear word. He says, I do not think anyone should trust the clear word as a reliable translation of the Bible or even as a useful paraphrase. It repeatedly distorts the teaching of the Bible. It removes significant content that is in the original Hebrew or Greek and adds new ideas that are not found in the original texts. Verse after verse has been changed simply to support unusual Seventh-day Adventist doctrines. But these changes are not supported by reliable translations such as the King James Version, New King James Version, English Standard Version, New American Standard Bible, Revised Standard Bible, or New International Version, or even by dynamic equivalent paraphrases such as the Message, such as the New Living Translation, or free paraphrases such as the Message. I was deeply troubled as I read various words of God 
I read verses. It was clear that these verses were no longer the words of God only, but the words of God mixed in with many words of men. And the ordinary readers of the clear word will not be able to tell the difference. I have older Jehovah Witness Bibles. And at least in there, there are occasions where they'll put added words in brackets. Yes. To show the reader something's been added. Do we see anything like that here? No. That's the, what Mr. Grudem just told us. Yeah, the clear word has been published with absolutely no footnotes, no attributions to Ellen White, and yet it contains Ellen White uh, writings woven into the text of the Bible. So, I mean, I hear this all the time from Seventh-day Adventists. Oh, my church doesn't teach Ellen White. We don't talk about Ellen White. This book doesn't talk about Ellen White either, does it? No. But it presents her ideas, doesn't it? It presents her ideas. So they yeah. do hear about Ellen White. That's without right. Mentioning Whether they know it or not. Absolutely. They may not know the source, but the source is Ellen White. He knows the source, doesn't he? Oh, he does. Absolutely. Yeah, he referenced her works when making this translation. Absolutely. Or paraphrase. This is just so deceptive and so sneaky. It's almost beyond description. Yeah. Let's talk about a couple of specific verses. You wanted to talk about two of them. Okay, Daniel 8, 14. And you're going to see a graphic here on the screen too, by the way, when, as we're reading those. So Daniel yes. 8, 14. Daniel 8, 14 is the central text of the scriptures that the Adventist church says is the reason for its own existence. In the English Standard Version... Daniel 8, 14 is very short. It simply says, And he said to me, For 2,300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary shall be restored to its rightful place. Very straightforward. When we go to Daniel 8, 14 in the clear word, we find the following. Expanded from, that was about 12 to 14 words. It's expanded to 54 words in the clear word. And it says, He answered, after 2,300 prophetic days, which represent actual years, God will restore the truth about the heavenly sanctuary in its rightful place. Then the process of judgment will begin, of which the yearly cleansing of the, sanct of the earthly sanctuary was a type, and God will vindicate his people. So you can see he has greatly expanded the, the verbiage of Daniel 8.14. And he includes enough information that the Adventists can th then do their mathematical calculations to come up with October 22nd, 1844, as the date Jesus was supposed to return. And, uh, and it's supported by Daniel 8.14 in the clear word. I mean, just looking at the graphic on the screen, looking at... Daniel 8, 14, from a reliable translation. Look at this unreliable translation. Just look at all the added thoughts, concepts, commentary. It is full of addition. It's amazing. We're going to do another one. Yes. Right? We're going to do Revelation. Revelation 22, verse 18. And this is where John gives his warning to those who are reading this book. He says, it says very simply, Revelation 22, 18. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. So again, a very straightforward passage. Doesn't need explanation. Hmm, I guess it needs explanation in the clear word. But the clear word adds something to this verse that makes it very useful for Jack Blanco to write the clear word. He says, in the clear word, I, John, warn everyone who reads or hears the prophetic words in this book not to add anything contrary to what is written. If they do, God's seven last plagues will certainly fall on them. So he's actually given himself a way out by saying, if I don't add anything contrary to what is here, I can definitely add things to this version of Scripture. Is so, it, this is this just diabolical? Absolutely, right? just yes. diabolical. Because what you you know just read it out of the clear word, and you could see it here on screen. If I don't add anything contrary, I can add, just not contrary. Right. But he does because we've already read their doctrine. We well, add significant. Oh, content. This, yeah. this this doctrine in this book is contrary to the word of God. Absolutely. Period. 
he changes whole chapters of Scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, which talks about the law as a ministry of death and a ministry of condemnation has been rewritten, and those words have been totally purged from the text. Because the law is so important to Adventists, he can't have it referred to as a ministry of death. Right. You know, even by his own words, when he changed this book, he has still condemned himself. That's he right. as added things contrary to the Word of God. He wrote this thinking he didn't, is, 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 is my opinion. Yes. But he has. Absolutely. He's just... Oh, anyway, Every, everybody yeah. can see the graphics, and they can just see... Jack Blanco is either in the class of one who is deceived, or he is a deceiver, and he knows the difference between the true scriptures and what he's been writing. All right, I'm going to go out on a limb here. He knows. Yes. He knows. He has a background. He has a background in biblical studies, and he knows these things. He taught. Know. Yes. How, for how long? Do you remember where? Uh, I don't remember for how long, but I think it was for at least 20 years at Southern College. Okay. He knows. Yeah. All right. There's, to me, there's just no getting out of this. Right. Ugh. All right. We've already alluded to it several times. There are different editions of this book, and, and you can see a whole stack of them sitting in front of you here. First edition. What year was that again? 1994. And do you, you got a first edition here? Yes. Is that, is that that one right there? There it is. The Clear Word Bible. Published in 1994. It's a complete Bible from Genesis through Revelation. And it was promoted as a Bible when it first came out. In 1994, they made four separate editions of this one book. And this it was published four different year. times in one year. And each time they made textual changes, they got rid of the word Bible on the cover and added the words expanded paraphrase to the subtitle to further explain what the work really is. And... The Clear Word Bible is still promoted as a Bible, although at Venice we'll say that this is not a Bible. We don't use it as a Bible. But again, as I've shown, many people are using it in church and Sabbath school. So You know, I have subscribers here that will agree with you and will put in the comments. So do, feel free to put in the comments hmm. your experience with using the Clear Word at your church. Because I know I've already heard from many of you or your your former church, let me say, because that's what you've done, and and you know that you've already you know many of you already told me that, and that's what they do. Yes. So, 1994, four different printings. They finally dropped the name Bible in 1994, right? Right. So, we're up to 2003. And is that the current? Is that a current edition? 2003 is the current edition of the Clear Word. And which one is that? Right here. Yeah, I think I've seen that cover on the Adventist Review. Book yeah, the side. clear word. Now, it's interesting that it says the clear word without the word Bible, but when you turn to the table of contents, it says books of the Bible. <laughs> so it's still a so clear word Bible. So it still <laughs> talks about it as a Bible uh. in, internally. Now, I think something that... Um, you brought up uh, that I wasn't as familiar with was something called the Easy English Clear Word and Clear Word for Kids. Okay. What are those? Yeah, the Easy English Clear Word and the Clear Word for Kids are textually identical to each other. You, you have them right here. I'm, I'm looking yeah, at them, right? Yeah, they're, they're for two separate audiences. The Easy English Clear Word has been written for speakers of other languages who are not familiar with English. And it's been what's called a simplified paraphrase. The clear word for kids is the exact same text as the easy English clear word, and yet it is targeted to children who do speak English as a first language and it gets them into using the clear word at a very young age. Now, I asked you something before we started. It's something that I honestly didn't know. 
So here is the current edition of the clear word. Mm -hmm. And here's the kid one that you're just talking about. Are they the same? No. The, to me, that's amazing. The regular clear word has many, many editions by Jack Blanco, a lot of editions from Ellen White. The clear word for kids and the easy English clear word has eliminated not just some of the insertions that Blanco made in the clear word, but it's eliminated actual passages of Scripture where he has uh, harmonized Kings, Chronicles, and Judges Kings Chronicles and First and Second Samuel to con contribute and to inform each other. So he harmonizes those books, and uh, and in so doing, he had to eliminate a lot of text. You know, before today, hmm. I would have said if I went into an Adventist bookstore, and what what about e either one of these? Because it has the title Clear Word, I would have thought I would have gotten the same content. Maybe with, you know, different cover, hard cover, paper cover, but I'm not. No. Nope. And, and, and that was something I truly didn't realize how different, just because it has the word clear, the title Clear Word on it, it's not the same book. No. And that's, that's amazing, too. I wonder how many even in the Venice Church know that. Maybe, maybe they do know it. Yeah, it's hard to tell. They probably do. There are many sales of the clear word for kids and the easy English clear word. It's, it sells as well as the regular clear word Bible. But uh, again, it's intended for those two different audiences that we mentioned earlier. Now, you've brought, you know, four or five, you know, six, seven of these clear words. What other formats does this does this so-called Bible come in? Oh, it, it's available as a pocket sized. It's available as a large print. It's available as an electronic Bible for your Nook or your uh, Kindle. And uh, it's also a, a audio Bible read by Lonnie Meloshenko, who reads the entire Clear Word Bible. Lonnie Meloshenko was the voice of prophecy for a few years. And uh, he's well known within the Adventist church. So this book is most definitely available they are making it available in all these formats you just named all you know four or five of them yeah as well as these hardcover soft cover formats it's a very available book matter of fact, i i subscribe i get because i buy books from the Adventist bookseller uh, center i think it was just recently my last flyer had this on the front cover uh. that they were advertising and selling it's like no 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 this book is out there and yeah, very available. It's popular. You can tell how popular it is because they literally jam the shelves full of these different formats of the clear word. Adventists are it's buying selling. them and eating Adventists them. Adventists are buying and using these yes. books regularly. Yes. All right, let's wrap this up here. Okay. Summary. What, do you, what would well, you like to say? The basic thing is what I read early, earlier from Wayne Grudem is right. The, the uh, clear words should not be used either as a Bible study or a devotional reading. It distorts Scripture so much that you can't tell when you're reading Scripture or when you're reading additions from the author's own imagination. And one sad note is the clear word has been available in non-SDA Bible bookstores. I found one at uh, Selah Christian Bookstore in Redlands, California, and the owner of the store did not know the source of the clear word. And he actually pulled it off the shelf and did not sell it. But there are many Christian book sites across the country and online that are selling the clear word as a, a as an available translation or paraphrase of the of the scriptures. Well, I I think that is bad. As a matter of fact, I want to I want to give my former Adventist a challenge and a job out there. Hmm. Wherever you are at it around the world, we got a lot of people listening to us from Australia, hmm. Central America, South America, Europe. You know, if you find that clear word book, just like Stephen found at a bookstore. Please be proactive and go in and talk to that bookstore. Be able to, in, in a congenial way, share with them and say, tell them what it is and see if we can get this book pulled out. 
This this should not be so. That's right. Now let's stop this. Yeah. All right. Anyway, we are going to do this is just our beginning video. Yeah. Kind of an overview of who Jack Blanco is and his methodology for translation, which is absolutely bizarre. It reminds me a lot of Sarah Young and God Calling. It's kind of this, you know. Yes, using her imagination to yeah. come up with these statements. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to get into more detail on the other videos that we're going to do. Good. However many videos that turns out to be. Yeah. Right now we were talking, I don't know, 10, 12 videos, but we're going to do that. We just scratch the surface here. Now you know what the clear word is and is not, and it's not a Bible. So what I want you to do is stay tuned for the uh, other videos that Steve and I are going to have, and they're going to be coming in, in you know, several weeks following this one. Anyway, thanks for watching. Good. I look forward to doing this.